Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales of the Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Best served cold. Written by Voyager 1713. It started with the bang. Well, it actually started with a whisper, but when the bang happened and the galaxy started looking for the problem, it was too late. By the time anyone figured out what was going on, a full 3% of the galaxy was gone, and we were all doomed. I'm getting ahead of myself. My species, the Ignax, were the first to find the humans of Sol 3 about 2,000 years ago. The Galactic Empire at the time considered any species that was pre-FTL to be non-sentient. Their world free to conquer and harvest for material. Needless to say, my ancestors were salivating at the potential prize that they uncovered. My only wish that I could go back and kick some sense into those bloody fools. After about ten years of invasion, preparations, then registering the planet with a GE as a prize for the Ignax nation, my ancestors began to attack the humans. What the galaxy thought would be another quick and simple extermination of local non-sentient species turned into a long and arduous 80-year war. The humans managed to bring down some of our attack craft and reversed engineered their own versions of our weaponry and shields, somehow even improved on the design and effectiveness. Nevertheless, my ancestors were slowly winning the war bit by bit. Sure, they killed 12 Ignax to every human killed, but our invasion force was constantly resupplied with fresh troops. For the humans, only had what was on their home world. It was during the final month of the war that the whisper happened, and no one noticed for decades. Until the first ban. Humans are inventive, little, expletive, closest translation, afterbirth of a diseased pest. During the last few years of the war, they managed to build what they call a last resort device in their intercepted messages. Using the improved stolen technology, they managed to build a single probe. The humans launched the probe, along with their remaining nuclear weapons during the final month. The humans used the warheads as a distraction to get the probe cloaked and far enough away from our senses, nuking the surface of their own world as a final middle finger to the galaxy. The sensor net that we placed on the initial attack reported that something left the oracle orbit, but... To steal the saying from the humans, it would be like finding a needle in a solar system with all the radiation blinding the net. The higher-ups deemed the object as floatsome, just a bit of space junk, and immediately ignored it to concentrate on more important tasks. The fools! Thirty years later, the first of the bangs happened. The binary star system closest to the Sol system went supernova at the same time. The event grabbed the attention of the stellar scientist in the Galactic Empire. The Proxima Alpha Centauri stars were thought to be unable to go supernova, and there was no indication from any of the science probes in the system that the stars were unstable. Less than a year later, Bernard's star went supernova, then Wolf 359. In the span of ten years, the rate increased exponentially. All the stars within 30 light-year radius of Sol became supernova, regardless of the star's condition. The media started calling it the Sol Phage, as the only star that seemed unaffected was Sol itself. The Galactic Empire ran the largest relocation effort at the time, clearing out a quarantine area of over a thousand populated systems and setting up sensor nets that would hopefully act as an early warning system. The sensors only gave the Galactic Empire about 24-hour notice before the star would explode, wiping out any orbiting stellar bodies and leaving behind glowing gas and dust. A bounty was created for any information on why the Sol Phage was happening and how to stop it, or at least slow it down. Millions of amateur scientists, researchers, explorers, and high school equivalent dropouts scoured the rapidly expanding quarantine area for clues. It took 300 years and 3% of the galaxy gone before we literally hit the answer. One of the bounty hunter teams must have used all the remaining luck in the universe. The team impacted with an unmanned stealth probe 
in an ice rock debris belt normally found at the edge of a solar system about 250 light years from Sol. They recovered the probe and brought it back for analysis. The results were not good. The probe was a 100 meter cylinder, 25 meters in diameter, with a set of rings on either end. The color was so black that it seemed to absorb the light from the laboratory. The scientists noted that the coating was not only allowed the probe to act like a hole in space, but it also covered the hole up as if it wasn't there. Any energy that leaked from the probe was just slightly over the cosmic background radiation, making the device next to impossible to detect. We managed to crack open the probe and found that it was equipped with a reactionless drive system that the Galactic Empire had theorized, but ultimately thought impossible to create. A power source that used a Casimir effect to create nearly unlimited energy. Again, something we had thought impossible. A device that took up half of the space inside the scientists eventually named the Forge. The impact caused the probe's memory banks to wipe and self-destruct, along with what seemed to be critical parts of the internals. But the scientists managed to figure out that the probe had two main functions. First, it traveled to a nearby star and settled into an outer debris field, where it mined for resources to replicate itself using the forge. The humans had a term for this, a von Neumann probe. This explained the growth. The second function is what caused the sulfage. The probe would create a bomb of salts filled with some kind of exotic matter that our scientists still don't understand. 1,500 years later, the bomb was sent into the star with a timer and would cause the star to go supernova. This device came from another term the humans had, MAD, Mutually Assured Destruction. The scientists found a plaque in the probe and after translating the inscription based on the copied media from the human's internet, sent a widespread panic through the Empire. The block is how we realized the galaxy was doomed. That block is why I'm telling you the story. The Galactic Empire is no more. The few remaining stars of our galaxy are on borrowed time. The last great hope that we have is to send you in a sleeper ship to colonize the next galaxy. We hope that they program the probes to only stay within our galaxy. But with the human's legacy and wrath, we're not sure. The block, all right. Here are the words of our galaxy's doom. UESS Retaliation, Generation 27. For revenge is a dish best served cold. End of story. Story number two, Those That Thrive in the Light, written by good dear Nice Bear. It was an unprecedented night. The outpost on XB-988 had received a message from a previously undiscovered species. The premier in that sector didn't hide her annoyance until she heard what that message contained, that is. It wasn't a proclamation of a new empire destined to rule the galaxy nor another Zediot, warning everyone around to not dare approach them. This time, it was different. It was a present from a small, distant world, representing our hope, determination, and goodwill in a vast, marvelous universe, as it claimed. And this wasn't yet all of it. Already all of those involved were skeptical. It seemed like a cruel trap. Luring those naive enough to think an alien species may not want only to rule and subjugate others. The Premier decided that three lower-class scientists should remain in the outpost's main chamber and listen to the whole message. After all, if it was some kind of trap, she didn't want to lose too many of her people. After three whole cycles, the scientists made clear that there was nothing sinister about the message. Moreover, they insisted that the Premier needed to see it herself. After the showing, she was speechless. The message was filled with greetings and images, sounds of nearby stars symbolizing hellos from the region of the galaxy itself, symphonies that she was captured entirely by. Her entourage's favorite one was about the so-called imagination, light clicks that echoed throughout the outpost, spiking everyone's interest. After a while, 
as the showing room was filled completely with staff fascinated by the sounds. And most interestingly, they hoped to overcome the challenges of their times and join a community of galactic civilizations, and that was the only remotely bleak thing in the whole transmission. There wasn't a galactic community of friendly nations waiting for them. There was just a handful of bickering realms in a constant state of war. That is, when the whole ordeal was reported to the higher-ups. Every significant worker of the outpost signed personally under the letter to the Viceroy himself to send a flotilla of warships and civilian ships to welcome those magnificent beings as equals. It's the first time in known history where a species deserving of such treatment was found. And when the translation transmission dicked out, all hell broke loose. Millions volunteered to be a part of such an endeavor. Ships from the most respected dark yards were donated, and military vessels from the most secretive labs were drafted. Veterans poured into the capital, demanding that they be a part of the project. They wanted to make sure that no one harmed, possibly the only species willing to befriend them. And whenever you went, you would most certainly hear the music of the blue marble. The only thing on people's mind was the expedition. And when it finally arrived, war was an understatement. Those that were a metaphorical beacon for the civilization for the past months also turned out to be an actual one. Their cities flooded with cool blue and warm yellow lights, illuminated as much of their artificial creations as their astonishing minds and kindness. Every soul in the flotilla clung to their viewpoints, from the harshest of their commanders to the generals and to children, fascinated by seemingly the only species that would play with them, hopefully soon. The news channels have gone crazy. For the past few days, there have been non-stop reports of unknown objects heading for Earth. And now, of all things, every possible media was filled with a single phrase. Do not be afraid. We come in peace for all mankind. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Fudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Van 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.